fun to clean in first place. Uh, first place tie. Yeah, I mean, it's a little unusual to have five losses and be in first with, with this many games left. But, you know, we'll take it. Um, I think our guys have done a good job the last seven or eight games in terms of winning, you know, finding a way to win. Um, you know, it beats being log jammed in fourth. But uh, still a lot of basketball left people. I was going to say, you try to keep the guys' heads down and focus on what needs to be done here? For sure, because, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the margin of error is very thin. Um, we, we still have to play well in order to win. We, we still can't play bad and win games. I mean, the, the other night, we, we beat a good team because we, we were on fire. Um, so it's not like we, we can go out there and not play well and, and stay in first place. So we, we've played well and we need to try to continue to do those things. Are you the one keeping them focused, or do you think the leadership on the team is kind of doing a good job? I would imagine the, the leadership is, is doing that. I mean, I, I think players deserve the credit for sure. I mean, they, they, they've got to do it. I mean, I could, anybody could say it. I mean, you guys can say stay focused. I mean, I mean anybody can say it. They've got to do it. So I think, I think the leadership is, is in a good place. Last week, uh, we talked about the relative lack of experience in terms of a full Valley schedule. And you joked about how guys like Tulio, you know, wouldn't really seem much different going into a place like Loyola. Yeah. Did you see that when you were up there, that they were just kind of like, let's go play? For sure. I don't think, you know, uh, uh, Keandre Cook or Tulio or Josh Webster realized that that's a tough place to play. I don't even think they really, I mean, I know that they care, but I don't think that they care to the point that it affects them. Um, and that's good, right? I mean, uh, now JD and, and, and Craig, they understand the importance of trying to get prepared to go into that play. So we, we've got a nice little mix of, of both. But um, it's like tomorrow, I don't think, I don't even think Keandre Cook and Tulio maybe even understand the reputation of a Northern Iowa, right? You're talking about probably the best program top to bottom in our league over the last 10, 12 years. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Tulio coming with uh, another player of the week. Just how have you kind of seen him grow into one of the better players in this league? Well, you know, the thing I'm happy about right now is he's making his free throws. Knock on wood, right? Um, he's, he's started to defend a little better uh, when, when things aren't going his way, but, but he's still got some, some room to grow with that. Um, I think a lot of the credit belongs to, to Josh Webster when, when you talk about Tulio because you go and look at all his made baskets and I mean, Josh Webster's probably assisting on about 80% of those, I would imagine. But uh, and, and as well as guys like Cook and Dixon and Krecklow and Ritter being able to knock down shots to, to keep the paint so open for him. So I think it's a total team effort, and he's he's just the one, you know, re reaping all the, the rewards. So he doesn't seem to be taking it in. He, he, when we ask him about it, it's team, 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 team. Yeah, I don't even think he knows what that <laughs> stuff is. I mean, which again, that's that's good. Mm -hmm. You know, that's good. I think. Um, I think Tulio's the type of kid, he's just happy to be here, he's happy to be playing, and um, you know, he's an emotional kid, but we, we need a little emotion. Yeah. We talked to him, he, I mean, he missed the first five games, you didn't expect to have him, just could you imagine not having him at this point? I mean, he's been good, uh, we would have had to find another way, um, I don't know if it would have been the way we're playing now, I don't know if anyone else has that skill set, but we, we would have had to do something, so I'm not sure what that is, but he's good to have. I know you don't want to look ahead, but I mean, you've got four games left, three of them at home. Uh, but why are you going to ask me to look ahead? <laughs> just, That's what we do. Just talk a little bit about the, the path to St. Louis, I guess, and, and the road ahead for you guys just to get in position. You know, we need to start um, preparing for St. Louis. And what, what I mean by that is our practice habits. You know, we, we've got to really lock in on the fundamentals right now. We've got to lock in on our half court defense, our half court execution. Um, rebounding, just, just the basic fundamentals, you know, because St. Louis will be here in a blink of an eye. And uh, you don't just get on the bus and say, hey, it's St. Louis, we're going to play better. We've probably got less than 10 practices left. Um, uh, I know this week we've only got two, and then I guess next week we've only probably got three. So we've got almost five practices, you know, until we go to St. Louis, which we'll probably practice a couple of days. So about seven or eight practices to, to get ready, along with four games. So it's still a lot of room for improvement, but we've got to try to start getting in that, that, that do or die mindset for sure. When those games, a lot of them come down to the last couple possessions, as they have lately, uh, and you're, you're pretty much running the same five guys out there. How confident are you 
in those three transfers and your two seniors? Well, you know, we got to keep those senior guards out there for sure. Uh, and then I think Cook is our best perimeter scorer. Tulio is probably our best overall player. So um, I think those are the guys that need to try to finish the game. I mean, you know, I'm no genius, but if you want to win, I think you should have your best players out there. Um, and then we've got some good young players too, but I, I just think those guys are, are definitely, have definitely separated themselves in terms of who our better players are. Um, I'm not excited that they all average over 30 minutes a game in the league play. That, that's not exciting. It's why we don't practice a lot. But, um, you know, player, players gonna, they gotta make plays, man. I mean, they, you know, the other night we, we made a big play. Uh, Webster uh, uh, threw a nice pass to Tulio, put us up three with, Think maybe a minute or something. I mean, that's that's just player making a play. That's not a play we drew up. I mean, that, I mean, and that's you know, if, if Tulio's not out there, then we don't have that play. So we, we just got to put our put our most experienced, proven players out there. Late in the game, four guard lineup. How is it kind of? How's it? I mean, it helps a lot of wins. But I mean, how how have you seen them able to defend some of the bigger teams in the league? Well, you know, a lot of a lot of people now are going with these skilled four men, and, and even though they may be bigger, they they don't play around the basket. Tomorrow, we're going to play a team that plays four guards. Um, Loyola, they have a, a big forward, but he just plays on the perimeter. Um, the game prior to that, Evansville, big guy, but he's a perimeter guy. Um, you know, we, we normally put Crack on, on those type of guys because he just, you know, he kind of mucks it up a little bit. And Cook is long enough to do it. Ritter's long enough to do it when he plays. Um, so basketball's changed. It's you know the double post isn't out there very much. Um, if we if we run into anybody that does that, then then you know we we got we got a couple double post options. I mean D Scott's playing a little better, um, and um, Kabir Muhammad can, can defend the post a little bit. So we 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 got some options. Coach, let me ask you a couple of questions. Um, one of them played in Arch Madness, getting ready to coach in Arch Madness. A, a very small fraternity. Just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it up there. I think it's uh, obviously a great city for the for the tournament. It's got so much history. Uh, the facility's great. The location is awesome. Um, you know, I've been a part of it since the early 2000s when I think the championship game would get almost like 19,000 people in Creighton and Southern Illinois. And, you know, obviously being there with Wichita one year. Um, it's a uh, it's it's a neat it's a neat tournament and and uh, it's one of those early ones so so the whole country is really getting an opp opportunity to see you so I, I think that that does good for our league and, and this year's tournament I mean that thing is that thing, it's wide open I mean it's I, I honestly think a playing team could win this year I mean four games in four days is a lot but heck man I mean anybody can beat anybody. Uh, just talk a little bit about you guys being in first place in the conference and, and what it means to come back here and try to stay in first place. It's been, it's been good so far. We've had two big trips in a row, and I'm looking forward to come here and just got just get another dub, you know, bring all the fans in here and just have a great crown and just perform with, with my teammates. What do you remember from the last time you played Northern Iowa and they were able to hold on, hold guys off at the end and win? What's tough? We had a lot of turnovers. Um, I believe in the first half and also in the second half we have a little bit too. And we just got to come here and play hard, you know, 40 minutes and just bring everything we got. They've got some size and, and you're the only size the Bears have, so you're going to get ready for a physical contest? Yeah, yes, for sure, for sure. It's going to be a physical game like always uh, in the volley, so I'm looking forward to bring out and just play hard. Take me through you. You were uh, player of the week again. Just uh, how, how comfortable are you right now? And just to continue that, are you planning to do that? I mean, I give it credit to my teammates. You know, I could have do, I could have get anything without them. You know, it's a, it's a collective game. It's not just a, um, uh, like tennis, uh, like sports like that. You know, it's not an individual game. I could have do anything without them. So I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. How quick? Oh, go ahead. Uh, take me back. I mean, you weren't supposed to play this year. Just, mm -hmm. just take me back to the time, uh, <laughs> the first five games you sit out, and then just being told that hey, you can, yeah. you're, you're allowed to play. I mean, it's just a blessing, you know. Uh, just being prepared all the time, being uh, in the gym practice, you know, and just being prepared. It's just a blessing to be able to play this year and just help my teammates and the coaching staff to, you know, you know, be in the first place right now, but. I mean, the work is not done yet, but 
it's just a blessing. What was your reaction when you found out? It was good. It was it was I was so happy. I told my family about it, my friends, it's just ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yep. 